Hi, my name is Barbara Gray from Clarity Stamp here in the UK and welcome to YouTube Tuesday. For a long time now, we've been on the groovy trail and if you follow traditional parches, then you'll be familiar with this wonderful lace work or grid work as it's called. And uh, it's something that's always eluded me. I've never really been able to tackle it because traditionally it's all about counting. Now at Clarity, we put our heads together and we came up with a really um, uh, innovative way of, of tackling this that makes it a lot more simple. And so today what I want to do is introduce you to our amazing grids. And uh, first of all, this is the card that we're going to tackle today. And you see Dave and me in the middle when we got married. And then you can see outside that wonderful lace work. So let's have a look how we actually achieve this, shall we? This is using a particular plate. And I want to show you how these plates actually are constructed because it's something very special. If you look at the plate now, you'll see, for example, this one's called Mary. They're all queens. These are queens. And this is Queen Mary. And you'll see here the pattern. And if I just line it up on here, you'll see exactly how it works. Look, you see, here's the pattern. But I want to show you something very clever. When you look at this, this is a groovy plate, like we know before, you know, where you get in the groove and you emboss. But this side is drilled. These are actually holes. So if I, if I showed you like so, maybe you would be able to see that this is actually drilled right through it's a different to this, but they complement each other. We've got four queens in total. Mary was the one I used here. When you, when you receive this plate, this drilled duet plate, as we call it, what you'll find also on the back, you'll see the pattern that we're aiming for. And what Josie, our friend who designed these patterns for us, what she kindly did was she also gave us um, a, a cutting uh, pattern as well, a cut instruction with the little red dots, the little red crosses will tell you exactly what to cut, but we'll come to that later. So this is how it works. It's a combination all on one plate. This is completely new for us um, where we've got the groovy plate combined with the drill on the same on the same plate. This is very exciting. So this is Mary. Let me show you the other ones. Mary's the one we're going to use, so hang on to her. Um, and let me show you Anne. So again, it's a different pattern. I think the best way to show you how, what Anne looks like, let me turn around for you, right? If we look at Anne, the best way to show you is to show her in, um, in actual, in a design. So that's a different pattern, you see, to this one. Can you see the difference? Here's another one with Anne. Look, absolutely beautiful. See, this is Anne. Now, if we take Anne out of the way, let's look, for example, at Victoria, Queen Victoria. So if we take Victoria, you see it's a different pattern again. But if you look at the, let's have a look. This is Victoria now. So beautiful design, okay? And this is also Victoria. Now, what's interesting here is you see, it doesn't have to be square. I'm gonna show you all, all about how to size your, your lace work or your grid work in a minute. And then, so we've had Anne, we've had Mary, we've had Victoria, and bringing up um, the last of the queens, we've got Elizabeth. This is a particularly beautiful one. And you'll see here, for example, the bookmark. This is lovely. Have a look at Elizabeth here. See the cutting? And there's so many different possibilities. This is lovely as well. We've got a lovely calligraphy font um, as well. I'll, I'll, I'll direct you to that on the website. But you can see here, sometimes you cut it out, sometimes you don't cut it out. You can change exactly what you do as you get used to it. But I'm going to show you today how these work because I think that they are a game changer. Um, so let's have a look at this and let's go back to Mary because this is the one I want to show you. Look, and that was a really lovely day. Check out, you see the flowers here? I want to show you the flowers here. Look, let me bring them in because these are something special as well. 
There's a lot to be said for paper craft. Look at them. Isn't that wonderful? Our dear friend Rebecca uh, made those for me and they're exactly the same today as they were when we got married, the day we got married. God bless paper craft, eh? So there we are. I thought I'd show those off. Aren't they gorgeous? And this is my lovely Dave. So I felt that this merited um, a beautiful frame. So let's take Mary and let's have a look. So I'm concentrating here, for example, the first thing you want to know is about size. How do you know what size, how many, you know, this will give you a square if you go round, but I haven't got a square photograph. I've got a rectangle. So what I'm going to do, you see, if you look at these plates, you'll see that they, on the groovy side, they've got these double lines. These are good for two, to lots of different reasons. First of all, they help you lining up and uh, making sure that you don't go off piste. And secondly, if you don't want to uh, cut the outside edge or the inner edge, then you can also just, in, um, just get in the groove and do double lines and you don't have to worry about cutting, right? Or also, um, it helps you now establish a size. So for example, if I take the plate, pretend that the lace isn't there, but it's good for orientation. You see, I can see exactly from these double lines, it tells me exactly how large, if that's the photo in the middle, how many um, of these patterns do I have to go along? So you see, I've got two, four, six, I need to go eight that way and 10 that way. So it means I need to know when to turn the corner when I need to get to the corner. But the corner is obviously here. So it just helps me. If we've got two, four, six, seven there, then I know I need another three to come around that corner. Right, so that's the theory. This is where we're headed, and I want to show you how I tackle it. Everybody, when you get these plates and you start to play, you'll work out your own way, the same as I did. Um, but I want to show you what we need and how we're going to get going. Are you ready? Let's get started. What I need, first of all, from the starter kit, you know the groovy starter kit, what I'm going to need is the, um, the groovy plate mate to hold my plate in place. Now, what I want to do before I begin is establish, for me, I'm going to do the line, um, the line art first. So in other words, the embossing, not the, not the perforating. The perforating I'll do after I've done the line art and after I've done the white work. That's the way I, I, I've... That's the way it's been taught me. So I think also I'm going to go to a I'm going to go to an A4 size um, parchment only because A5 is a bit tight and I, it won't fit. There you go. So we need a larger piece of parchment. And then the next thing we need, let me just get all my bits, all my ducks in a row here. I need some groovy tabs. Just a minute. I had them with me and now they're gone. Stay there. Groovy tabs. Right, I need those to hold it in place. And then what I'm going to do now, here we go, is I'm going to establish my line art. Now, I've already started to show you. And what I'm going to do, because it's really easy to line up, I'm going to take my, my number two groovy tool with the little ball at the end. And I'm going to actually establish the lines. So what I mean by that is I'm going to go around the outside. Let me show you where I'm headed and then you'll understand what I'm doing. You see, I've gone all the way around the outside. So that is what that proves to me. Before I, I get caught up in all the lace work and the grid work and spend all that time, I want to make sure that it's straight, that it's, so I'm only going around the outside first. For me, that makes sense. Other people may do a corner at a time. Me personally, I want to make sure that when I've got my photo and I've got my card, that I'm absolutely bang on exactly where I want to be. And then I'll do the infill. It's just the way I work. So you can see here, actually, when you look through, you can see quite easily, you can see the dots with a black underneath. You can also see even better if you're using a light panel. So for the sake of argument today, I'm going to use a light panel. Here we are. So this is a light panel. 
a light wave as we call it. And you'll see now, I'm on that side. I'm going to take my, I will fast forward in a minute. Let's start afresh so you see exactly what I'm doing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the, um, the groovy plate as my orientation. In other words, the inside line here is going to keep me on the straight and narrow. Do you see? So I'm going to hold it like so with groovy tabs. And now I know that I've got to use this line. That will keep me in place all the time. Then I'm going to use my number two tool and I think I'm going to reach for my groovy guard because it helps me, keeps everything tight while I'm working. And then all I'm going to do is go all the way around. So I can start here and you'll see I only want to do the outside line. I don't want to do anything else because for me it's more important that I, I establish the frame. It would be the same if I was doing a straight line. This just happens to be a dotted line. And you'll see with the number, with the number two tool, you don't puncture the parchment. If I was to turn this round and do that, I would go straight through. So that's why we use the tool with a little ball at the end. In Pergamano, if I'm not mistaken, you'd be using the 1.5. That would be the same, that would be the equivalent, the 1.5 embossing tool. See, so, so this is held in, holding it in place, and then all I'm doing is going round like that. Okay, and I'll keep going and going and going. And then when I, when I, I'm going to count, you see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then when I get to there, I have to turn it. Let's pretend, let's do this one, all right? Let's pretend we've gone all the way along like that. Okay, let's just pretend we've done all that lot. And then I'm going to lift this off because I want to do eight or 10. That's what I've got. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I want, now, if let's say this is going to be the short side, right? I just want one more at that end. Then all I'm going to do is lift this off, right? Then I'll turn this round and immediately this will, now I need one more before I turn the corner. So I hold that in there like so. There's my one more before I turn the corner. I use this line here to align to make sure that I'm absolutely on track. Yeah? You can see why I want to do the outline first, can't you? See, so I know that that's on track now. And then I'll keep going and I'll go round the corner, right? So then, so it's a lot quicker if it goes wrong and you suddenly don't join up after, all the, after you've gone all the way around. You can imagine if you've done all that and then it doesn't line up, you'd be much happier if you've only got to do the, the outline, right? So then you go all the way down there, do 10, but that's how you turn, do you see? And what you'll find is it's a lot easier because you can feel it, it locates. So let's fast forward. See, that, that I know is the right distance across there. And what we're going to do now, there, let me just show you. That there is exactly the right distance across there. Okay? So I'm checking, checking, checking. Now we'll go to our, let's, let's say that we've done our outline. And once I've done that, then the next thing I want to do is go all the way around establishing the inside. So again, I'm going to use my groovy tabs. You following me? It's really easy, right? Outline first, now infill. So again, I make sure that my it's all lined up nicely. Number two tool. Groovy guard. And then round we go again. So all the dots now. You can see that the light wave actually really helps a lot. <clears throat> so now I'm going round and I'm doing all the dots. And what you'll see is, it's just easy. You know, you just take your time. In the olden days, before these grids, you used to have to count. Two, two, miss two, 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 
just one. Can you imagine trying to count this? They, I mean, they'd have a pattern, but this is so, so much easier. Now, when it comes to this area here, again, these are the bits that we're going to emboss as well, aren't they? This is where we're going to do our white work. So wherever you're going to do white work, you're going to use the number, the number two tool as well. So that's that. And if, for example, in here, if you want it to be nice and crisp, then you're going to use your number one tool there, like so. So again, you go round and you fill all of this too. Let's have a look, see where we're at, shall we? Let's take this off now and we'll fast forward because you're going to go all the way around. I'm not going to go all the way around, but I just want to show you. If I, let me turn this off for a, I'll leave that on and I'll take the, a black mat to show you. I think that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah, I think we can adjust that way. So now you can see that you're going to put all your dots in and you're going to do all your white work. So let me fast forward now to one that I've already done. And you'll see here, I've gone all the way round with the outside. I've done all the infill, always working from behind. And now I've also started on the white work, the white work being the shadow. Let's look from the front so we can see it. And you can see here, we've done a little bit of grey work here. We've done the first amount, uh, the first uh, layer of white work here. I'll show you how to do that. Then we've done the second work. The more you do this, the whiter this will get. That's the trick. Just leave it to rest. So let's do a little bit of white work next. And what I'm going to suggest is actually I'm going to turn off the light wave. We're going to turn over the black mat because I need a soft mat to do this job. You all right? You're following me. I love this. I think it's really a game changer, you know, because I always wanted to do this lace work. and I really didn't know where to start. But but with Josie's patterns and Jim's engineering, this has really come together beautifully. So now again, we're going to work on the back. And now I'm going to go, you know, you know, we own Pergamano. Well, Pergamano have got loads of ball tools. What we need now is ball tools to do to stretch the parchment to do the white work. So we've got different different sizes of ball tools. This is quite small this pattern. So we could use, for example, the number three, the number four point five. If you've only got the starter kit at home and you haven't started collecting these yet, then you could also use the number four. You know, from the the groovy starter kit, that's also available to you. So let's use that one. And what we're going to do now is light feathery strokes and we're using the soft side of the mat. Now I've got a tip for you. If you're quite new to embossing and you, you, you're worried that you're a little bit heavy handed, where's my groovy guard? This is always best to lean on, right? If you feel that you're a little heavy handed, right, then you can always take like a poly bag, something like that, and put that underneath there like so. And then when you put that on top, you'll find that when you press then, it's so much more forgiving, right? It, it just, you, you, it, it acts as a resistance so that you're, you're less likely to go through the parchment or, or tear it. But you can see here, just in this corner, so I'm using the number three tool from the starter kit and I've got a little poly bag underneath, but you can see immediately how white it gets. And I'm just doing light feathery. I'm not pressing harder. I'm just using a smaller ball tool. And you can see now how white it gets. If I take this away, the protection, you'll find that this actually works even better, right? But it's, it's just a question of getting used to how much, how heavy handed you can be. There's a pink mat as well. See how white it's getting here. Can you see that all right? So it makes a difference. Um, there's a pink mat. It's called an excellent mat by uh, Pergamano as well. We sell them. And they're, they're also quite forgiving. But you see, so I go in with a number four tool like that. And you can see immediately how, how white it's getting as opposed to grey. My suggestion is that you go all the way around again, gently, gently, softly, softly so that you don't buckle or tear the art, the parchment, right? And you just add a little layer, look, see how it's getting whiter? Can you see that all right? 
Let's turn it round and have a look at the progress. See, it's already getting whiter. And my suggestion is you go all the way round, and by the time you get back to here, with your number four tool, then flick the tool over, and then start again in the same place with the number three tool, and do exactly the same thing all the way round. I tend to make the artwork come to me, because I like to just flick. It's like striking a match, right? You just strike the match, and you'll see immediately how much whiter it gets, especially if you let it rest a little while. So, for example, let's go to one that's relatively white, like that one there. This is already quite white, isn't it? Let's have a look over that side. Yeah, it's already quite white, look. Nice. You see that all right? Let's turn that over, and let's see if we can make that even whiter. Right. Oh yeah, I can see it immediately. As soon as, so this has been resting now for a little while. And as soon as I go in and I just add a little bit more of a stretch and you will feel, it's like the, the parchment just pings back. Let's have a look. There you go. And you can see it's whiter again. So that's your, that's your job is to go all the way around until you're happy. See, a lot of parchers, what they do is they have several different jobs on the go at the same time, several different projects. So that they'll leave that one, then they'll go to Elizabeth, then they'll come to Anne. So they do different patterns as they're going. Um, and over the period of a week, rather than keep focusing on the one, they'll let that one rest, go to the next one, let that one rest, go to the next one. So there, there'll be several projects in the pipeline at the same time. It just gives the parchment a chance to relax. Okay, so now we've done that, now we come to perforating. Okay, so when we perforate, we need a mat underneath. And at this point, I'd like to just have a little revision on the, all the different mats, because there are loads of different ones. First of all, we've got our black mat that's in the starter kit, which is hard on one side for colouring and soft on this side, isn't it, for embossing. Now the soft side, we've also got the pink mat, the excellent mat for people, or for those of you who are maybe a little bit more heavy handed, right? But that's another story. We've also got these black mats in A5, the baby one, and we've got it in A3 as well. So that comes to you in different sizes, isn't it? I like the, a, I like the big one, the A3 one, for all sorts of artwork. Right, so now there's another black mat, right? This is uh, a cutting foam. So we're gonna use that in a minute cutting foam. So that's also black, but it's very soft. It would be too soft really for embossing. You just go straight through. Then we've got white ones. Now we come to the perforating. So with the light wave, often there is a, a thin um, sp spongy foam as well, which is great for perforating. And then we've got the super foam, which is just three times as thick. This is the one I'm going to use now. This is the one I prefer because I put it underneath my artwork and it diffuses the light, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't lessen the brightness. So the, the, um, the light wave is just as effective, but it, it means that I can now use the perforating um, side of this duet plate and, uh, and not keep tapping into my light wave. So when I turn the light on now, up to, oh, hang on, up to full brightness, that's perfect. Then I need my, my uh, groovy plate mate to hold this in place. Then I'm going to go with the drilled holes. Now what you'll see is on the plate it says emboss this side up. Well we've done that. And then on this one it will say perforate this side up. So it tells you exactly perforate this side up. In other words, you have to flip the plate and flip the artwork because when we perforate, we perforate from the front, don't we? Now, let's see, which one are we going to go to just to start the perforating? This is a good one. The one where we were doing the white work earlier. So we've been working on the back, we've done all the white work, and then we're gonna flip over, and now we're gonna use the, the, the drilled holes. And what you'll see is, we need a couple of groovy tabs because you're gonna hold it all in place. And what you'll see is, excuse my head now, but the the drilled holes, they sit in the areas around, let me show you. So as you do this, you'll see that they sit exactly, I've already started at the other end, so it's, te it's tending to catch it for me. Let me just put this in place. 
Right, and you, as soon as I'm happy, and I have to kind of keep my eye on all the holes like that, then I'll pop that in place. Again, this line, the, the top edge here is giving me the, you know, it's the same place, isn't it? Do you remember? So the, the edge of the, um, the groovy plate, mate, the plate, the plate itself is giving me a good guide, but it's worth just looking, just look all the way down that the holes are in the right place before you secure your, your plate. Now there's one thing I've forgotten to show you as well, another little trick, and I may have to realign it again in a minute. This is the um, tumble dry sheet, right? And when I start to perforate now, what's a really smart move is to, let me just lift this up, lift the plate, the plate will come in again in a minute. I'm gonna put the tumble dry sheet on the super foam. This is a really cool tip. And what that will do is, Linda Williams taught me this one. If I then, well, as I go to perforate the holes, every time I go through with the with the, the needle tools, it will keep slicking up the needles because I keep going through the parchment. Now, I keep going through the tumble dry sheet. Now we need perforating tools. Enter the Pergamano. Because we're using the drilled plates and the groovy plates are all based on a bold pattern, bold, right? So I've got a one needle bold, a two needle bold, and a four needle bold. Can you see there at the end of the, you've got one, two, and four. These are bold perforating tools. These are needle tools. And I'm gonna take the lids off. We've got new lids that don't crack. When we took over Pergamano, we weren't happy with the cracking nibs. So these ones are really like you, you can press and press and press that you, well, I've done the stumping on test. They, they don't, <laughs> they don't crack. All right. They're not brittle. They're not brittle. These are really, really robust. So it's worth investing in those as well. Now let's have a look. I've got, so I've got, I'm happy with where my, my holes are going to land if you like, right? Once I'm happy with that, when I started out, I felt I was more comfortable, let's just make sure I'm in the right place, right? I was most comfortable, to be honest, with a one needle tool. And I found that as I went round, now I'm on the front, you see, and I can go all the way around like this. And what I'm gonna do now is literally just follow the pattern. So that's what you're going to do now. You're going to go all the way around. I don't know if you can see, but basically you're going to perforate every single hole. And should you inadvertently try and um, perforate where there's a white emboss, there is nothing there. You can't, there's no hole, so it won't, you, you're not going to go through, right? The holes are only there where, you, where they should be. So once we've done that, let me, let me take this away and I'll show you one that I've already completed. Um, it's, quite, uh, it's quite relaxing because you can't really go wrong. So let me take this one and if I pop this over the top now, you'll see that it's completely perforated. It's, it's done to completion all the way around. Okay. Let me turn this off for a minute so we can have a look on a piece of black card and we'll see where we are. All right, so we've done all the white work. We've done all the dot work from the back, haven't we? So that was all done from behind, the white and the dots. And then when we done that, then we turned it over and then we perforated all between. Now it's up to you. If you, for example, aren't at the cutting stage yet, you, you still have to, you st you've still to master the Pico cutting, then it may be that you're just happy with that. And if you are, let me tell you that it looks beautiful. If you, if you go back to the plate, the groovy plate, the Mary plate, you'll see on the Mary plate, you see these lines here, these outlines that we used for alignment, they will sit perfectly there. See, they will, they will frame your work beautifully. 
all your lace work will fit within those lines absolutely lovely so if you wanted to you could just draw a line cut it with a ruler and a blade finished you don't have to cut it looks like nice lace but if you want to do something like this then it's time to cut sometimes you'll look at something this complex and you think but well, where am i supposed to cut which bits am i cutting out so enter the pattern when you when you get your plate home what you'll find is let me just find mary if i've got mary here that's anne stay there talk among yourselves for a minute while i find mary there she is mary mary quite contrary in every pattern what you'll find is in every grid there'll be an insert like this it will tell you on the back exactly what the pattern looks like, which one you prefer. Like that's Mary, there's Anne, they're all different. And it shows you exactly where you're headed, right? That's what we're going for, isn't it? And to be sure that you're cutting out the right part, when you turn it over, Josie, our friend Josie, has told you exactly which parts to cut out. We've also written out instructions for you. So if you forget all this, it doesn't matter. It's all written out for you anyway. Let's have a look. So if we're going to go to cutting now, we don't need the plate. What we're, going to, what we're going to go to, let me just show you. If I go to one that I've already started cutting out and there are a couple of tips I want to show you. So the first thing is your weapon of choice. Now I've got a lovely little, this is not nice. Glynis got me that, thanks Glynis. Um, I've got a pair of scissors. So I've got here the ring lock and the um, exclusives. These are both Pergamano scissors. It's a question of choice, really. I, I actually like these ones best, but the ring locks are beautiful as well. The ring locks tend to lock. I suppose the clue's in the name. They just stop. Um, and also, if you've got larger fingers, these are quite good. I'm going to use my, my little simple exclusives, though. They do the job perfectly for me. Now, do you remember earlier on, I, said, I was talking about um, different foam mats. So this, let's take this out of the way for a minute. We don't need the white one now. There's only so many, there's a certain number of mats and tools. And then when you've got all the gear, then you, re you, you don't have to buy it again, you know. But this, this is, for example, what I'd call a cutting mat. And when you buy the scissors, we always supply you with a smaller piece of uh, foam to get used to it. Some of you will prefer to, um, to actually hold the artwork in your hand when you cut, and some of you will prefer to lay it down and cut on the flat. It's entirely up to you. I'm, I'm actually getting used to doing this now. When I work on the telly, I tend to do that because I'm holding it for the camera, you see? But in, in effect, this is, this is actually probably the more relaxing way to do it. Now, when we look here, what you'll see is that there are certain little bits that need cutting out. So let's have a look. If we look, we've already done that bit there. So it's this little area along here, let's say, that we want to cut out. Can you see this okay? So for example, the most important thing we're cutting, we've talked about this before, is that you always hold the scissors over the bit that's going to fall out over the waist if you like. So if this is the bit that's gonna fall out, then I need to cut along that line there and then, a lot, and then turn it and always hold the scissors over the waist. I can't, you watch. Let's just do this little section here. So I'm gonna, I'm holding the scissors like a spoon with the, um, the curve pointing upwards. I've got my thumb in there. I've got my finger in there. I'm holding this, do you see? And then I'm going to I'm going to use actually to do this job. I'm even going to use the other hand just to steady. So if I put the scissors in there like so, just the tips, then I'm going to twist and snip. And then I'll go in again and I'll twist. In we go and snip. And when I lean over like so, I mean, I'm a lefty, but you'll see the tip is going in where the hole just was. But I'm I'm actually holding the scissors over the, um, the bit that's going to fall out. Now, if I was going into mass production, I'd go all the way down here, all the way down there. I'd do all that lot. But I just want to show you that I have to keep the scissor over the top of the bit that's going to fall out. So I've done that bit. Then I turn it over again, right? And then I'll go the other way. 
So now I'm coming down here. Now if I want, I can use my, this finger here controls, when you're starting out, it controls how deeply you, you insert the, the, um, the tips of the scissors. Right, and then when you turn it over, for example, now if I just pop in there like so and snip, then you'll find when I lift that away, that's the bit that I've, I'm left with, you see? So that one, it looked like it had already been done. So I'll go one more time. So you can see that I'm just following the pattern here. Now what I can do now here, you're going to wonder, well, which bit am I cutting out and which bit am I not cutting out? Enter the pattern. So if we look at the pattern here, it shows you exactly, the little red marks will show you exactly which bits to cut out because really it could be quite confusing here, okay? So let's have a look. So that we don't cut out the wrong part, we'll have a look here. So you can see those little bits there, they need cutting out. And this large star shows you exactly because you'll think, well, am I supposed to straddle right across there like so? And the answer is yes, you are. Now I have it on good authority that it's always best to do the larger straddle. See how that the gap between those two is bigger than usual. So it's best always to do the large straddle these. Do you see what I'm getting at? Do those first, like so. So I've done the four really large gaps there, and then I'm gonna go in and do the smaller pieces in between, see? And you hear that little snip, and you know you've got it right. There you go. And you just turn and turn. So the plates, there we go. And then I take that away, and there's that lovely little star there, you see? Same as all the others. And that's how it works. And then the only other thing is, you look at the pattern again. So that I just wanted to show you, because there you could be quite confused, you wouldn't know which bits to cut out, you see? And then if you look at the pattern here, it tells you exactly what we're also going to cut out is these four little bits in, in between here. So for example, let me show you this one. If I just go in here, like so, you see I can hold it in my hand, that's force of habit, isn't it? See, and I can turn it round. Let me put it on the counter, it's easier, isn't it? I can't see which one I was going on. Right, like so. And we'll turn it over. Like that. Keep your eye on the one you're doing, Gray. There you go. Then when you lift that away, there's your lovely little cross, you see? And that's what we're looking for. But the good news is that the, pa the cutting pattern tells you exactly what to cut out. So you can't make any mistakes there, really. There you go. So once you've done that, then let's fast forward and let's have a look at one that's already been done. All the insides have already been done. Look, doesn't that look fantastic? See, that is really something else, isn't it? And you'll see around the outside, there's an, only one more thing I want to show you around the outside as well. That's what gives it that really amazing lace look. Do you see? It's when you go around the outside. What I found was that this is quite a large piece of parchment. And I found, oh, hang on, I've just, there's a light in the building. I found it quite hard to reach across the parchment. So it's actually easier to make it smaller before you begin. There you go. And then you're not dealing with a great big piece of parchment. It's all I need is that, isn't it? I've already, so I can use that for something else. And then once I've done that, let me just show you again. Do you remember what I said about the, 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 the straddles? The wider pitch is going to be here, isn't it? So this is where, again, you want to do the large... stretched holes first and then when you do that you'll be a lot happier anyway oh we've got a little bit of a the other thing is if you do make a mistake or there's an inaccuracy or an imperfection the lace is so busy really that if it's not perfect nobody's going to notice nobody's going to go oh hang on a minute you got got one too many holes there failed 
You know, it's not like that, is it? Come on. It's, well, it's not like that in my world anyway. So all you're gonna all you're gonna do then is go all the way around like this. See, I would be I would be tempted to do all the ones in the same direction first and then go back. See, so you do all those ones like that. Then I'll turn it this way, and then I do all these ones. So I don't keep turning, turning, turning. See? So I go all those ones. Do you see what I'm doing? It just speeds up the process a little bit. Then you do all those. And then when you've done all them, then you turn the parchment round and you do all these ones. And what I'm doing, the only other thing I want to point out, this is for somebody who's new to cutting, right? Is take your time. Take your time. When you see that little V appear, that's that's when you snip. So you go in, snip. And I'm just going to cut those ones out. See, and then I've done all of that in one hit. So let me just cut that away so you can see it without cutting through the artwork. There, you see? So that way, I've done that whole section just by going that way, then that way, then that way, and then finally releasing in the middle. And, you know, it's enjoyable. It actually is when you get used to it. So that's it. That's it, my friends. And then when, you, when you've got all these holes, what you're doing is, you see, you're exposing the background. So now, for example, enter our design the paper. If I put, see that is too busy to my mind because it spoils, it detracts from the beauty of the lace. So that's where the designer paper comes into its own because it's double sided. So now we use the more muted side and it looks really, really fantastic, right? Um, let me take another color. Let me take this color. If I put that behind, so you've got that fantastic peachy color. See that, very lovely, but a little bit busy, I think. Turn it round magnificent because it really it enhances it doesn't detract so to finish up now if you look at where we are we're just that far away from completion and then the photograph sits beautifully in there we haven't cut out the back that's it and then all we do is we attach with brads in the corners and everything else is actually loose. When you, when you actually look at this, you'll find it's not attached around the outside. And that, my friends, is how it works. So I hope you enjoyed that. I know I did. These are a real breakthrough. If, you know, like I got to a point in my, in my parching where I really wanted to do this and I didn't know how. And then Josie and I put our heads together and she said, well, what about trying this and then Jim said well we need to put the grid and the groovy on the same plate and there we are lo and behold it's a groundbreaker so I hope you enjoy that if you are interested in these plates in the queen plates um, then do head on over to our website uh, and if you're not sure and you you still check out groovy worldwide on Facebook because there are so many samples of the Queen's lace coming through there um, there's another, there's another set in the pipeline, the Kings, which are equally astounding, but I want to get my, I want to get to grips with the Queens first. Um, so yeah, I blog every day. I, I, um, I hope that you like and subscribe. And, uh, and other than that, get into this because it is, this is, this will take your parchment art to a whole other level like that. Uh, thanks very much for joining me and I shall see you next time. Bye-bye now.